Okay, so I've got my Paul Rubens set and a couple of other sticks that I might need. Um, as I said previously in part one of this review, uh, the Paul Rubens set doesn't have, the set I've got to be correct, because there are other sets, um, doesn't have very many darks in it at all, only a black and a very dark purple. So there's this one, which is a lovely colour, um, which I will be using. So, right, to start off, I like to have a nice, neat, lovely horizon, and I do that with a bit of tape along there. And this is pastel matte, so it doesn't matter if I stick that on there. But if you're just using like Canson Meton or something, um, you might want to put it on your trousers first to release the tack so it doesn't actually stick when it comes off. There we go. I do like to have a nice, neat horizon. Okay, so I've got the darkest blue, which is a very nice blue. And the pastels are, they feel a little bit chalky, but they do feel nice. I'm just putting a little bit of paper down the bottom of my easel. I'm just going to see how much pastel drops because I get a feeling because they feel a little bit chalky um, I'm going to get quite a lot of foliage but let's just see and I've got a nice lighter or pale blue it's going on very nicely though Putting another layer of the blue over the top. It's nice to do things with pastel where you're using lots of layers because then you build up this lovely, lovely layered effect and it's always just nicer when you use several layers rather than pressing really hard and then just blending it out like this. And sometimes blending does take a little while and it's worth waiting for it to blend rather than thinking oh there's not enough on here and it's not blending just giving it a little extra time to blend on the paper this is obviously specific to pastel mat as well so it is my favourite surface Lately, I used to use velour quite a lot, but I do love detail, and although you can get detail on velour, it's it's much easier to get it on pastel mat. Yeah, so I'm using lots of circles to get that to blend, and then coming across. That's really quite nice effect across there. You can see the across there the pastel hasn't quite blended and it's left some nice cloud effects. And I can put some little wispy clouds in the sky. Like that. Nice. Oh, I'm just going to go a little bit lighter down the bottom.
see that doesn't blend at first but if you just keep blending keep going at it it will blend okay, I can take that off it gives me look at that oh that's nice and what you can do is put this back on the other way as well and give you a nice neat edge the other way masking tape is so handy in art there we go right now we've got the blues and the greens and everything <laughs> and in my photo reference there really isn't any uh, purple but I'm about to use purple because it's the only dark I've got in this apart from black it's the only dark I've got in this set so uh, here we go. I'll put some purple on. As that's the darkest, furthest away. And put some blue in there as well. So I'm really trying not to use other pastels, just for a, just for a challenge for me, really. I mean, it's not like it's going to matter if I do because real life you'd use whatever you've got wouldn't you? I'm putting some black in now as well just to get that a bit darker a bit more purple I can take that off now Ooh, look at that, love it <laughs> it's the little things that make you happy there we go and I'm just running that across there just to settle the pastel in because it's a little bit um, loose where the tape has been so just running my finger across there is nice and later on if I felt like I wanted to just make this a little bit more hazy along here I can just do that and give it a little bit of a blend okay so coming into the greens now and again I'm going to struggle with my dark green so I'm just going to add a dark green to it because it's it's just going to be too too um too light if I don't but I'm going to put some of these other blues in first just to see what we get so what's that one a little bit of this blue that we used in the sky a little bit of we've got some green here like a, a nice muted mid green I want this is a unison blue it's dark 22 well it's just a unison dark green or any green will do see that's not blending at all which is good so I don't want everything to blend together I'm just going to come down to about Probably about it and then it starts going into the shoreline here and 
then we've got sandy colours, so we can use those lovely sandy colours in the set, sort of about down here, find another flat edge. Something like that. A lighter colour, absolutely lovely, perfect. Sandy colours. Get a bit of a darker one in there. That will do for the moment. I'm going to bring some more green in across here because it gets really much more greeny. In fact, I'm not going to have it too greeny because green is not my favourite colour. So I'm just going to alter the reference photo to make it just a little bit more blue down here. These are more my favourite colours, so I'll keep the green for out there and get some blue in here. Like that. Uh, now I want this to be blending a whole lot more up here and it's not really because I want to get those colours to blend. So you, there's two things you can do, you can add more pastel or you can get a blending tool. So I've got a soft tool here, so it's a sponge on a palette knife, and this is good because it means you don't put too much pasta on, if you want to preserve your layers, so you can have the tooth, you can just use that, but you can't drag it all the way across, you have to do little ones like this, otherwise you end up breaking these sponges and ends up getting expensive and annoying. So just do little drags across like this. And if it's really if it breaks instantly you just haven't got enough pastel on at all. Right, put a little bit more blue in there. Slightly, I don't want it to just completely disappear, so I'm being careful how I blend this now, just gently. This is a blue, dark blue piece of pastel mat. got some nice tooth on it. Sometimes the tooth on pastel mat is very low or it's too much but this one is just right. There we go and I'll put some more dark in because I've got this nice dark along here but it's on its own so I just want to add a little bit more in so it doesn't look like it's like what is that there? It doesn't look quite right. over there. Okay, so that was the Paul Rubens purple and then I'm going to add my blue in. There. Don't need much. Now you see how the difference between doing it with your finger and the soft top.
And then when we get down to here, the, we're starting to get a wave coming through. So we've got a very light bit that comes across here, which is just where the light is catching. We're just going to put that in. That. And then some green, but do I have the right green? No, I don't. So, put the wave coming up there. Like that, and I'm going to get my darker green. That's broken on that side, so it's, it's quite done that. You can see how it's broken like that. I should have checked that before I used it. I do need a darker green again, but there we go. Bit of a darker green, I think. Yep, there we go, that's nice. Just a little bit on there. Pulling that down to blend it in the direction that the wave is curling. I'll get some more of that sandy colour in there. It's really just, it looks like it's the light shining. And then I want some more darks, so my unison dark again. So this is where the, the water is really shallow. You push it into the paper, you get more layers. And even though pastel matte doesn't feel like it's got a tooth, it really does have a tooth. And you push it into those layers, it just lets you have more pastel on top. I'm going to get a bit darker with these areas. So we are up here putting some of the waves in in the distance with a, a light blue, the blue that we used in the sky and my blue pastel pencil, my Faber-Castell blue because it's a very light 
sorry, very dark blue. So it's uh, dark indigo. It's the darkest blue that I like to use in, of all the pencils. And then I've got the a, a light blue. It's a Faber Cas. Oh no, it's a Carbacello four three five. Just to pull out the ends of the, just neaten them up and make them more triangular. The ends of these little waves that we can see there. We can add some white on top of them just to make them really pop. So I think this is the white. There's a couple of. Is there one or two? Well, we've got this one, zero, 061 and 201. I think that might be a yellowish. Quite hard to tell. I think that one is the white. If I can't tell, then obviously it doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> and it's kind of looking quite pinky now. Let's see what we get when we put on the paper. Yeah, it's a little bit whiter. Yeah, okay. Right next we're going to have a little bit more of that bluish just coming across the top of the water. So I'm going to do a little bit of it in pastel and a little bit of it in pencil as well. Because there's quite a lot of it. could get carried away with this and end up all of it being just white. Switch to pencil. So I've got that pale blue again. I can be a bit more accurate with this. And again, I can use my pencil as a, a blender, which I do like the effect of. I'm just jumping around a bit here so that I don't overdo it. turning my pencil just to find different edges on the pencil. You can see how the pencil isn't as strong as the pastel and that can sometimes work for you and sometimes work against you so you need to Choose your tool wisely, whether you need the pencil or a stick for a, a punchier colour. 
and then you do need to stand back as well just to make sure you're on the right track it's no good being right on top of your work and it looking fabulous and then you stand back and you go oh no and I used to do that a lot with my portraits and I think why why doesn't it look the same when you look back and it's because of the shapes you have to get the big shapes right before you you go into the the um the detail especially with portraits So what else I can do here is get a light green pencil and something like, it could be green or it could be yellow, but in the um, Caran d'Ache range these, they've got these gorgeous really light greens and they're really super and unusual as well, you don't get them in many sets. darker one. That's that's the two one two, the other one was two one uh seven one one. a little bit harder to get that green on top. for a, a lighter, a darker blue. Like that. Just even darker actually. There we go. So this is another layer over the light layer and it just all adds up to creating that lovely translucent effect when you put all the layers on rather than having just thick pastel yeah I really like this colour going on Another colour I really like is the peacock, peacock green, and we've got some of those in the set, in the Paul Rubin set. Add some of that in there. That's nice. This is all really, really gentle. I go back to that blue. As we come across here, we get some nice blue bits across there. So I'm just rolling my pencil like that, side to side. the lighter I'll put some more of my pastel on as well before I put too much pencil on
and then my pencil again, my light pencil. choppy over here not, not really choppy but you know just a little bit and I'm going to go in with my dark dark blue break things up a bit sky blue colour put some more of that on top right and then next I'm going to go for a creamy kind of colour. In fact, I might go for this one. This is the Earth Green from Caran d'Ache and it's, it's so pale, it, it's you know matching sort of that colour. I could use a, something a bit more yellowy, creamy. So, this is the uh, pale yellow Whoops. Just catching the light there with some yellow coming across there. And it kind of fades out and then it comes up back this end. Changes direction like that on the how the water is being moved about. A bit dark green over here. Then we want some more of that cream. In fact, I'll put it on on the stick and I'm just going to sort of flick it out like this. See how the angle is being changed. To get that movement of water and the way the, the wave is being pulled. a little more of that and 
And then before I move on a bit, I'm just going to show you a couple of colours that are beautiful, lovely lilacs. And one is, uh, this one's Caran d'Ache, and this one is Derwent. And this is a, a really old Derwent pastel pencil. And if you compare that to the pastel pencils you get now from Derwent, they don't have a pink bit there. Um, so this is quite a, an old colour. It's called Dark Violet 25F. And... Um, if you can find them on eBay, they're, they're really nice colours and different, especially this one. And I'm just going to put some of it in the sea like that. Just because I love lilac. And I can actually see it in the photo, but um, I do tend to be able to see it a lot. <laughs> And I manipulate photos so I can see it because I just love it so much. And I'm just going to finish this off now and I'll come back to you at the end. pleased to say that I do like the Paul Rubin set. They are they're soft, they blend nicely, um, they appear to be better than some of the harder sets that are out there that are um, for student level entry and uh, the only gripe I have is that they don't have the darker colours, they don't have darkest blues, darkest browns um, and I'd Oh, and darkest greens as well, that would have been handy. So I did have to use some other pastels in with this, but, you know, that doesn't matter too much. Um, and I do know that they are on the case with getting those darker colours available. So um, it's a nice little set to complement your other pastels. Mm -hmm. 